Hey guys, it is Danny, and welcome to this updated video on the tropics. And so in this video, we're going to be talking about the potential for us to probably have some development taking place as we're going to be heading into the new month. And we also have three disturbances over in the eastern Pacific, two given very high chances to become our next name storms, I would say maybe by the next day or two, according to the names Hilda and Ignacio. And so guys, before I go into details... <laughs> Okay, so of course, let's kickstart things with the North Atlantic Basin. So let's take a look at the satellite imagery of that. And so we're seeing here that we don't have a whole lot going on in terms of uh, showing the storm activity or the potential for us to have a tropical cyclone imminently. But we do have some spots of shower and thunderstorm activity, especially just off Africa and in sections of the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, as well as Central America. But as I said, nothing too significant right now. But things can change very, very quickly. And so so let's take a look at persistent conditions so first up we have the saharan dust map and so we're seeing here that we have a lot of dust extending across most of the main development region and just off africa and that is indicated as we head into the orange and red shades and even to that pink shade that means that conditions are extremely hostile it's almost impossible if not fully impossible for us to have convection taking place in such an environment because moisture is being inhibited and tropical cyclones need moisture in order Order to develop and to intensify and so with that lacking it is unlikely that we will have any sorts of development taking place in that region and so guys now let us move on to the wind shear map and so we're seeing here that uh, the different colors show different shear intensities we have the greens meaning favorable shear the yellows meaning neutral and the reds meaning unfavorable and so that unfavorable shear is what really rip up our tropical systems when they're trying to develop the neutral shear won't really be too impactful and the favorable shear is as the name suggests it accommodates tropical development and so looking across the uh, parts of the Atlantic base we're not seeing the full coverage here but we're seeing that the Gulf uh, most sections of the Caribbean as well and some parts of the main development region are favorable to accommodate or tropical cyclones but again other factors are there and not just this that influence our systems and so now let's take a look at the ocean temperature map and so we're seeing here that we have the Gulf and the northwestern Caribbean and also sections in the vicinity of the Bahamas being very very warm so these are really the warmest sections of the Atlantic Basin as of right now so once we have the wind shear being conducive once we have that uh, no dry air intrusion and then we have our tropical cyclones being over these warm waters perfect conditions to aid in tropical development and even rapid intensification and I would say the Gulf of Mexico is not surprised at all over the years we've seen where we have rapid intensification taking place i've made mention of this before uh, that we've had systems such as harvey michael laura most recently rapidly intensifying in the gulf of mexico once the conditions are right and so i would say if you are anywhere along the gulf coast and not just the gulf coast but also the east coast and the caribbean please take the necessary precautions and stay safe for the hurricane season if you have not yet done so we don't know where where will be impacted by tropical cyclones this year or how major those tropical cyclones will be at the time of impact so we have to ensure that we are always prepared and not just waiting until disaster is at our doorsteps to get things in place so there are some simple things that can be done from now such as ensuring that there are no large trees hanging over your property to cause damage in the event of strong winds uh, ensuring that you're not in a flood prone area or if you are to know that you have a set area to evacuate to in the event Event of any intense weather and keeping all your important files and documents in something that is reachable waterproof and safe so guys it is very important that we all stay prepared throughout this hurricane season because we don't know what exactly the season will bring and so now let us move on to what the GFS model is forecasting for the next week or so out. And so let us take a look at this map here, which is a map showing the isobars. And the isobars are lines of equal pressure. And the closer you see them in a circular manner with the pressure below 1030 millibars, that is a low pressure system and can be a tropical cyclones. So that is what we're looking for. And so by the 5th of August, just off Africa in the vicinity of the Cabo Verde Islands, we see here that we have quite a bit of moisture in that region. So let's go further out 
out to Saturday the 7th of the month and so there we see the isobars coming more together uh, kind of like we're having a depression or maybe a storm developing and just so you know the next name to be used is Fred so we have not yet had a disturbance that has developed into a tropical cyclone and acquiring that name so that name is still unused for this season and also take a look over in the EPAC by Saturday the 7th the model is showing quite a significant system over in the EPAC fortunately not moving towards land it seems so let's go further out so this is by Monday the 9th of August and there we have that low pressure system in the Atlantic moving more to the west and it is definitely on the strengthening trend over in the EPAC 952 millibar low pressure system that is most definitely a major hurricane at that point that the GFS is showing and so let's go to Tuesday the 10th and there we have the system probably weakening a bit we don't see the ice bars being being very compact anymore and so as we head to saturday the 14th the system fortunately as well the gfs model is showing is not impacting anywhere up to that point but the pressure has dropped to 1005 millibars and whenever you have a pressure drop with our tropical cyclones it means that the winds are stronger or the system is stronger once we're having a decrease in the minimal pressure and so guys that is really the end of the model run at that point and so could the system be heading for the Bahamas, the US, or is it going to be curving out to sea? All odds are on the table. This is just a prediction that the model is showing. And so we're just covering the potential as of right now because, of course, it is always possible. And we shouldn't ignore when these when we have our models trending towards something, especially for the fact that we're going to be approaching the peak of the hurricane season. So that is it for the Atlantic. So now let's talk about our Pacific system. So there we have the trio. We have two high in red which means that the chances are very high and a newly identified disturbance in yellow which means that the chance is low so let's look at them individually starting off with our most recent system so as of right now this is not designated as an invest and it is given a 30 percent chance to develop into a tropical cyclone during the next five days and it is going to be moving somewhat parallel to the western coast of mexico so fortunately this system here is not expected to move inland into any areas but it will be moving out to sea and let's look at our other one here so that one a bit more to the west of it's given a 90 percent chance to develop into a tropical cyclone so very high chance so maybe by tomorrow or so we could have this system becoming a depression or potentially a storm and then we have the other one a bit more to the west of that one there given an 80 percent chance so it is likely that that could become a depression or named storm around the same time as the previously mentioned disturbance guys and so fortunately as i said these systems are not going to be threats to land but the epac is quite active considering that that's not much activity is really anticipated due to the expected el nino which is going to be resulting in cooler temperatures there in the epac guys and so it's kind of vice versa for the atlantic right now where things are pretty quiet but once we have all of those favorable conditions kicking in we can expect a spike in tropical activity taking place in the atlantic and so guys that is really it for this update video and if you found it to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts in the comments or ask a question i'll try to respond as best and as soon as i can and just remember to always be otherwise and of course i will keep you updated as time goes by